Hallelujah. Today our message is the mystery of the name of God. The mystery of the name of God. A couple of weeks ago, whilst I was in Ghana, I think one of my devotions, I had to read John 17, verse number 6. John 17, actually. And as I read through the high priestly prayer of our Lord, I was struck by verse number 6. I want it in the Amplified, if you can bring it up. The Amplified. Thank you, Jesus. It says, I have manifested your name and revealed your very self, your real self, to the people whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept and obeyed your word. I have manifested your name. And then, first of all, I thought to myself that many times when we speak about Jesus, we say that he came to redeem us, he came to save us. I know in the book of 1 John, the Bible says, for this cause the Son of Man was manifested, or the Son of God was manifested, that he may destroy the works of the enemy. So we have looked at it as he came to redeem and he came to destroy. But I discovered from this that he actually did come to reveal the invisible God to us. To reveal God to us. Because here he is in his prayer to his father. If you read from the beginning, he addresses Holy Father, you know, uh, now I have completed the work. You know, give me the glory I had with you from the beginning. And then he says, I have manifested your name. I have revealed your name. And that struck me. Revealed your name. So the name of God must be a revelation to us. Amen. And this revelation brings us to know God, the real God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then I read verse 12 of the same chapter. Verse number 12. And it says, While I was with them, I was keeping them in your name, which you have given me. And I guarded them and protected them, and not one of them was lost except the son of destruction or son of perdition, so that the scripture will be fulfilled. I kept them. In your name. Then I realized that the name of God is very important to know. Hallelujah. And I began to ask myself, what is the name? What name are they talking about? Or what name is Jesus talking about that he revealed to his disciples and to the people that God had given to him. So I did a little study, a few scriptures as a foundation. Let's go to Genesis 4.26. Join with me in this journey. I've not fully discovered. Amen. To Seth also a son was born whom he named Enosh, mortal man or mankind. 
And at the same time, men began to call on the name of the Lord. What name? In worship, through prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. Men began to call on the name of the Lord. 12, 8, Genesis 12, 8. The next few scriptures I'm calling are in Genesis. Hallelujah. You can, you, you can use the New King James for now. When I need the Amplified. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 13.4. 13.4. Just flow with me. Thank you. To the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And there Abraham called on the name of the Lord. So we must realize that the name of the Lord is important. Hallelujah. Amen. But then we understand that throughout history of the Jews, the children of God, the name of God was so sacred it was not to be pronounced. That's what they believed, that the name was not to be pronounced. And that back then, the name they knew was YHWH. Of course, how do you pronounce YHWH? Until later when they put vowels in it and we got Yahweh. Yahweh, Y-A-H-W-E-H. -E and men began to call on the name of God. But let's look at Exodus 20, verse number 7. And maybe in this instance, give me Amplified. Yes, give me the Amplified. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. That is, irreverently, in false affirmations or in ways that impugn the character of God. For the Lord will not hold guiltless nor leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain, disregarding its reverence and its power. So I believe that this being part of the Ten Commandments made them then decide that the name, we will not even mention it. So we will not be found guilty. So the name was not to be pronounced. But this is what God said. That don't take his name in vain. And sometimes it bothers me when, you know, somebody can just say, Jesus, you know, just making a whole joke out of the name. He says, don't take it irreverently. Hallelujah. Because the name is sacred. Let's look at Exodus 33 verse 19. This is Moses, after he's brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, with great signs and wonders performed by God. And he gets to the foot of the mountain that God had asked him to bring them to Mount Sinai, which was the place of the giving of the law. And he turned to God in prayer. And he said, you 
ask me to bring these people out of Egypt. Yet you have not told me who will go with me. And yet you say, I have found favor in your sight. If I have found favor in your sight, then teach me now your way that I may know you and find favor in your sight. That's such a deep prayer. Because this man that God revealed himself in a burning bush, God wrought mighty things through his life in Egypt. He saw demonstration of power and yet he is asking that I may know you. That means the acts of God are different from the very presence of God. So God tells him, don't worry. I will send my angel to go before you. And Moses says, eh, Lord, where we are here, if your presence does not go with us, we are not moving. Because how would they know that you are with us except your presence goes with us? Show me your glory. And God said, no man looks at God you know, this morning we were talking about, you see, the level of your hunger becomes the level of your revelation. David said, as the deer pants for waters, so my soul longs for you. Paul said, that I may know him. Now, these are people who demonstrated the power of God. Saw God manifest. Yet, there was something more their hearts were crying for. Hallelujah. And God tells Moses, I will show you my love and mercy. He says, I will show my love and mercy to anyone I want. So I will cause my perfect goodness to pass in front of you. And I will speak my name. Yahweh. So that you can hear it. And so God hides him in the cleft of the rock. And he, he says, <laughs> you can't look at my face, but I'll show you my backside. And so he passes by and he hears mercy, goodness. He hears different things. Show us your glory. Hallelujah. Show us your glory. So, the name, the name. And I love the song. And I ask the Lord, what name fits you? And he said, yeah. I said, next time we say hallelujah and don't realize that yeah, is in the ha -le. Amen. 
Ya. Generations after generations keep seeking you, yet no word sums you up. Then I asked the Lord, what name fits you? And he said, yeah. Yah, the hallowed one. Yah, the holy one. Yahweh, the king of Zion. Amen. The mystery of the name of God. So go with me to John. So throughout the Old Testament... This is how they knew and referred to God. Yahweh, the name that could not be declared. And then we come into the new covenant. For we know that Bible says Moses was faithful in all his house. But in Jesus we have a better covenant. For Jesus is the revelation of the invisible God. And in John 16, 23 to 24, listen to what he says. John 16, 23 to 24. In that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give to you. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, the name, he will give to you. 24. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive. That your joy may be full. So what do you think? Jesus is giving us the power of the use of his name. The power of the use of his name. And he's telling us that to guarantee answer to prayer. We pray to the father. In his name. Because the name represents everything that he is. And when he says he's given us the name. That means he's given us power of attorney. Power of attorney. That's a legal reference. A couple of years ago, a relative of mine had problems with his siblings. He lives abroad. The siblings live in Ghana. And they had to go to court. He works abroad, he lives abroad. So he could not be attending court. So he got a letter written with a notary seal that said, I am giving authority to my son to represent me in court. That means that whenever his son stood in court, it was him standing in court. Whatever his son said, it carried the weight of the one giving the power of attorney. I hope you're understanding me this morning. That when he gave us the authority to use his name, he was saying that all that I represent is in my name. Listen, there are certain names that when you mention, people look at you marveled because of what? 
the power of authority. Recently, I went for a funeral in Ghana. And one of the bishops came to the funeral. And then it was mentioned that, oh, he's a UN ambassador. Suddenly, the way people were, first of all, of course, he came with some uh, police escort. But suddenly, people were treating him different. You know, in reverence, coming to uh, greet him in all kinds of style. Because what? He is, there's a name. The power of a name. Amen. And I think we haven't caught the revelation of the name we have been given. Of late I've been saying that you may have something you are not aware of and desiring it and yet you already have it. You already have the power of attaining, but you don't know that you are a representative of Christ to the nations. And where your voice goes, his voice is there with you. Power of attorney. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. That means he has given us a legal right to use the name. Vera, you are called Vera Quasin Amanfo. I can't get up and begin to call myself Quasin. Do I have a legal right? But you have a legal right because your father gave you that name. You respond to the name. When you hear the name, you respond to the name. You claim all that the name carries. You have a name. A wonderful name. A powerful name. The name of Yeshua. The Yah. You see, God added his name to Abraham. Abraham. He added the H-A. Ha. The Ha. Sarai. The Ha. Hallelujah. The name of God. And we don't realize that the name is attached to us. Because we've been adopted. Hallelujah. I only have the legal right to the name because I have been adopted into the family. Hallelujah. I belong to his family. Therefore, his name is upon my life. And the name gives me access. Oh God, that you may reveal. I have manifested. I have revealed your name. Open our eyes. That we may see Jesus. Let's look at John 14. Verse 13 and 14. What and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. Not I may. Hallelujah. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Hallelujah. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. 
You either believe him or you don't. Does his name carry weight? Does his name give access? Hallelujah. Everything he accomplished, everything he stood for. His name stands for that. Open our eyes, Lord. Hallelujah. Because it must be revealed. Amen. And I, I cannot end up but conclude. As 1 Corinthians 2 says that. No one knows a man save his spirit. And no one knows God except the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You want to know God? You need to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We say it and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. You need to fellowship with the Holy Spirit because he alone can reveal God. God must be revealed. His name must be revealed. Din bi wo ho Din no free sorrow Din no ri yangwa we juma Ding no ni Jesus. Ding be woho. Ding no free sorrow. Ding no ri yang wa juma. Ding no ni Jesus. Angwa ngwe juma no ye o Nyami wo hoda Se wu jini dia Obeya ngwa ngwe juma Angwa ngwe juma no ye o Nyami wo hoda Se wu jini dia Obeya ngwa ngwe juma Obeya ngwangwe juma Obeya ngwangwe juma Angwangwe juma no ye o Nyami wo hoda Se wu jinu dia Obeya ngwangwe juma John 14:26 14.26 Are we frozen? But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Listen, everything is in his name. Amen. Amen. The will is in his name. Everything God offers is in his name. Jesus is the sum total of all that God offers. If you have Jesus, you have everything. Hallelujah. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Who is sending the Holy Spirit? The Father. Amen. We will get to that. Amen. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things I have said to you. Praise God. So if I want to know the name, who do I go to? The Holy Spirit. Teach me, Lord. Hallelujah. John, sorry, Mark 16. Mark 16, verse 17. 
Jesus, what a wonder you are. You are so gentle, so pure, and so kind. You shine like the bright morning star. Jesus, what a wonder you are. You shine, you shine like the bright morning star. Jesus, what a wonder you And these signs will follow those who believe. Another version says, and these signs will follow the believing ones. You've got to believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. In my name. Because demons, when they hear the name, have you come to destroy us before our time? Whatever his presence did is in the name. In my name, you will cast out. Are you a believer? Amen. The authority of the name gives you power to cast out demons. Hallelujah. Beloved, when I read, what has light to do with darkness or the temple of Belial to do with the temple of God? I decided, Satan, I don't live in my house with you. Hallelujah. Anything which is not of God, you've got to find your way. Bounce out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The authority. In the name. In my name they will speak with new tongues. Praise God. Is there in the scripture? If you don't speak in tongues. Appropriate the promise. In my name they will speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. Please continue. If they pick up snakes. I'm here to get the revelation because I don't think he wants us to be going around and picking up snakes. If they pick up snake, if you happen to pick a snake around you, kados mm, kabahatoma, sha, amen, or drink any poison, Listen, no, I'm not against vaccines. I was vaccinated from my childhood. But if I find out that there is some toxin in some vaccine, he says they shall, if they drink any poison, for me, ingesting can be any way. Through a syringe, through my mouth, I declare in the name of Jesus, anything which is toxic, poison, in his name, I declare you will be flushed out of my system. Hallelujah. I reject the effects in the name of Jesus. Too many people are dying. Too many people are getting cancer. They diagnose three months. Bah, they are gone. Young, healthy, young men and women. They drop dead. Heart attack. Heart, hey, no way. The name. These signs will follow the believing ones. Child of God, you don't know what you have. Hallelujah. We have not understood what we possess. Hallelujah. They will lay hands on the sick people. And they will get well. That means that you are a people. You can lay hands on yourself. 
we have become so accustomed to rushing to take medicine. We don't appropriate the word. Beloved, if your faith is not there, your faith is not there. But you must grow your faith. Hallelujah. Whenever you have the headache, it's not every headache you go and take ibuprofen. They are telling us it's not good. As soon as I had an auntie, a late auntie, as soon as she gets a, a, a headache, me saw Niva Queen Avena, she would drink Niva Queen. She drank Niva Queen until she became blind. The side effects. Mercy and atonement. Anything poisoning us. You shall drink poison. That means you don't just, I mean, you don't tempt God by deliberately, but if by some chance there's poison in the pot, the name, the name, you will lay hands. Hallelujah. It's time to begin to lay hands. Hallelujah. Now, who is this personality who is telling us in my name? In my name. If you go to the Father in my name, if you mention my name to my Father, he will do it. Let's go to Hebrews 1, verse 1 to 4. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God, who at various times and in various ways, I think let's do amplified, please. God, having spoken to the fathers long ago in the voices and writings of the prophets, in many separate revelations, each of which set forth a portion of the truth. And in many ways, has in these last days spoken with finality to us in the person of one who is by his character and nature, his son, namely Jesus, whom he appointed heir and lawful owner of all things, through whom also he created the universe. That is the universe as a space-time matter continuum. Brofo. The sun is the radiance and only expression of the glory of our awesome God, reflecting God's Shekinah glory, the light being, the brilliant light of the divine, and there, having become as much superior to the angels since he has inherited ooh, a more excellent and glorious name than they, that is, Son, the name above all names. All the saints and the angels bow before your throne all the elders cast their crowns before the land of God and sing you're worthy of it all you're worthy of For from you are all things, 
and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. me to Colossians 1 15 to 20 we read last week his name is greater than the angels his name is greater he is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created. That are in heaven. That are on earth. Visible. Invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. I want to know that. That person. He is before all things. And in him all things consist. He is the head of the body. The church. Who is the beginning. The firstborn from the dead. That in all things. He may have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. And by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross, you don't know the expensive name you have been given. You don't know. Hallelujah. You and I are yet to have a revelation of who he is. Hallelujah. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. Show us who you are. Hallelujah. Let me conclude with this. Philippians 2 from verse number 5. Philippians 2 from verse number 5. Let this mind be in you which also which was also in Christ Jesus. That means God is requiring you to think a certain way. Your thoughts must line up with the way Jesus thought. Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name. Which is above every name. And giving him the name. Because of what he accomplished. He has, another version says, he has inherited a name.
that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven, those on the earth, and those under the earth. Hey! All dimensions, every plane, every age, the age to come, every dimension acknowledges the name that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. That every tongue should confess. So if you don't confess it here, you will confess it at the end of the age. Hallelujah.